Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up this week's theme of jazz but unusual instruments looking at a artist named John Kaizen Neptune. We're looking at the track Ninja off of the Shogun album. The artwork on this is gorgeous. Uh, let's dive into this and see what's going on. So there's a lot of uh, traditional Japanese instruments in here. Uh, I think we have the shamisen, we have the uh, shakuhachi, which is the flute sound that's in our melody. Uh, I think we have taiko drums in the background, if I'm hearing that right. The bass, I think, is her tra traditional electric bass. We had a shaker over there on the right, which is nice. Chimes. Some sort of steel drum off on the left. We got. I think we got a guitar vamping on the right. Yeah, okay, so the guitar's coming in. Very smooth. And you know what's interesting is this is more ornamental than jazz typically is. Ah, uh, yeah, loving that hi-hat work.
very cool. Not, um, not entirely jazz, not all the time, but I'd say it's enough of the time that we can classify it as jazz or jazz adjacent, and, you know, <clears throat> I honestly think it's going to be kind of difficult to make traditional folk instruments work well in a traditional jazz setting simply because of the differences in composition um, in basically all the musicality of it. Uh, traditional uh, Japanese music has five notes in it. Um, and so it works off of pentatonic ideas. And jazz tends to work with complex chordal concepts based on Western music theory. And so there's just a really sharp divide between the more minimalistic design that Japanese music theory went through and the more complex or maybe even maximal... Uh, I can't say maximalist because there are more complex music theories uh, out there. But the, the more complex theory of, of Western theory. And so I think it's really difficult to craft a sound that is very American jazz out of traditional Japanese instruments based on how they're tuned and what notes they're allowed to hit. Um, I think you'd have to drastically change the instrument itself in order to make it fit better within that jazz context. And I think that's the reason why when we got to the solos, we didn't hear uh, a shaku hot swap. Why am I blanking out on that? Uh, the, the the flute solo, though. We didn't hear one, right? We got the flute at the end in a very non-jazzy uh, concept. We didn't hear the shamisen doing a solo either. In fact, we had an elongated electric guitar solo, which sounded very jazzy and didn't have many, if any, of the uh, Japanese compositional elements in it that we heard elsewhere in the track. It really did flip between the two ideas, and I don't think that's something you can really avoid or, or force them to mesh anymore. Um, the theories behind the, the two elements, uh, the two styles of music, are just, they're just a bit opposed to each other. I'd love to be proven wrong. I would love to hear something that feels jazzy and Japanese folkish at the same time, but uh, at least what I'm imagining, uh, it's going to be a difficult task. So that actually is what our song ends up feeling like, where we have folk influences at the beginning, and then we get a little bit of a jazzy break. We bring back the influences a little bit, or the folk bits. We go back to a jazzy break. We have a full-on jazz solo section with two solo instruments. We bring the A section back, which is jazzy, and we finish it up with a brand new section, which is just the flute. I'm kind of getting aggravated why I can't remember that name. It's Shaku. Shaku. Uh, is that it? Shaku Hachi. I don't remember if I said that right the first time. That is the pronunciation of it, though. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty I'll, I'll throw a picture up of this this has been a really good week by the way for uh learning about new instruments um oh this is kind of cut off a little bit isn't it because of the way that i have this all cropped up you can't see the top but it has a little um i got a picture of someone playing it mm, kind of it has a hole across the top that you breathe over like you do a flute, where you don't actually blow into the hole, you blow across it. Um, sort of like uh, if you've never played a flute, you don't know what a flute looks like, you don't know what it looks like to play a flute. Have you ever uh, seen people play like uh, Coke bottles? You just kind of, you blow across the, the opening of the, the bottle to make a sound. It's like that, but then you play it like a recorder or a clarinet where it's um, it goes down across your body and you cover the holes with your fingers. 
Um, but yeah, and it's traditionally made out of wood. Maybe it's only made out of wood. I don't know if they've ever updated it to more of a modern um, concept or not. Appeared in the 15th century. That's a bit of an older instrument. Um, looks like it might even be exclusively made out of bamboo. So yeah, it would never be updated if like the bamboo texture, uh, whatever it is, um, whatever properties of the, the bamboo itself influences the timbre of the instrument, you change even the base wood of it and you get a different sound, right? So yeah, this might be bamboo only. Very cool. Um, oh, even more interesting is that it's not exclusive to Japan. It also showed up in, uh, in China. Oh, okay. So let me take this back a little bit. We'll, we'll get back to the song, I promise. Um, the 15th, 16th century one I was talking about is the modern day shakuhachi. Um, the original one was introduced to Japan from China in the 7th century and stopped being used around the 10th century. And a variant of it reappeared in the 15th century. Wow, this actually is... interesting how it's sort of evolved over time which i think is you know it happens with a lot of instruments um where they start out one way and then evolve um in different periods or eras or especially when it came to uh brass instruments uh discovering you know better ways to go about um molding them and crafting them and how long they should be and how we can bend them i mean if you ever looked at a trumpet it's just a lot of bendy tubes all over the place. Um, same thing with like flugel horns and just a lot of brass tubas, especially. I mean, it's just a lot of winding um, pipage. Uh, so, yeah, as we've become better at making these instruments, even finding ways to compress them down and make them smaller while still keeping their range and stuff, uh, a lot of instruments have evolved over time. Uh, and it's interesting to see this, even something as old and simple as this, as, uh, you know, grab a stick of uh, bamboo and put some holes in it. It still had uh, a period of, um, what would you call that? A period of evolvement? A period of discovery? I don't know. Anyways, back to the track. Uh, where were we going? Oh, I described the different components uh, and the evolution of song. So let me dig into some of this. I really like the opening of the track. It sets a specific mood and doesn't initially dive into anything jazzy for like 40 to 60 seconds. It really lets you uh, absorb a lot of the Japanese folk instruments that are being utilized here alongside the the uh, traditional jazz instruments, the uh, electric guitar, the electric bass, the drum kit. And I think instead of pausing later to look up the lyrics, I'm going to pause later and look up the instruments because uh, I called out the shakuhachi, which I'm still not entirely sure was in here, but it's it was a flute sound and there were a lot of Japanese folk instruments in here. I'm figuring that's going to be it. Uh, the shamisen, and I even mentioned taiko drums, which I'm not 100% sure on, but there were certainly some drums in here that didn't feel like uh, modern drum kits. And, I mean, Japanese folk instruments, there's a lot of percussion in there. It doesn't necessarily need to be taiko. Uh, that's just the... the the, the, that's the Japanese drum I'm most aware of and the one that I can pronounce. Um, 
but I should actually take the time one day and uh, listen to a few of them because I think Tycho's are like medium sized and so they're going to have a, a specific range and timbre to them that should be easy to pick out if I you know take the time to you know learn the rest of them and how they sound and what they're called and stuff like that. Anyways, uh, we get a bunch of this stuff, and uh, it just sounds really great all together. Um, and we get a bunch of traditional Japanese music as well, working around that pentatonic scale that they use. Um, and I thought it was really interesting that we kind of had this washover effect, where the shamisen had this... It was descending, right? We we took one pitch and we ran down uh, several pitches. And then we also had some chimes off to the side uh, that felt like they ran their hand through. And so we kind of have this transition kind of sound. And then we move into this really funky, jazzy idea. And I thought this was interesting because if this wasn't Jazz Week, I would have had no idea where this was going. <laughs> Um, but we kind of shift a lot of our attention away from that Japanese folk music into American jazz. And so we, we shift, like I mentioned earlier, almost completely different theories, as uh, music theories. Uh, it's just a completely different atmosphere here. Um, but we don't ever completely lose that Japanese flair either. Uh, we do have a lot of percussion in here. We do bring in a drum kit. There's some phenomenal hi-hat work on there that I love. Um, just gives it like a super funky thing going on. I think the shamisen continues through and uh, the shakuhachi. Uh, we get a couple of lines in there as well. And it was paired with... I am blanking out on the instrument it was paired with. I don't remember what it was. There was two instruments um, playing the same line, same pitch. Um, harmonizing together, but same note, same, uh, same octave even. But I can't remember what was playing with the shakuhachi. But we had this melody line that was going on top of everything. We got this really funky driving beat underneath. We got the, uh, the bass guitar given us our walking bass line off on the left we the right sorry we have an electric guitar sort of just vamping away at chords a lot of palm muted stuff uh, pick a chord and get a nice rhythmic uh, idea off of it with palm mutes pretty typical jazz guitar stuff um, and there is a piano in here as well and I think that was off to the left and uh, just kind of throwing down some ornamental ideas Pretty standard jazz stuff, but I thought what was really interesting was the ornamental ideas And I think having listened to jazz this week Granted with unusual instruments uh, aside from I think what was it Neptunian maximalism, which was uh, a Little less standard jazz <laughs> a little more avant-garde um, and when we listened to jazz week We did jazz recently too, like last month I don't remember what the, the context was. Was that jazz without a saxophone? I don't remember. Um, but, you know, if you go back and, and think about all the jazz we've listened to, a lot of it is melody and rhythm. And ornamentation here and there. But it very little jazz, especially when you're looking at traditional jazz, a lot of the standards. Uh, you don't really hear a lot of atmospheric work. You got licks, you got melody lines, you got your rhythm section that has some ornamental concepts, and that's really about it. A lot of it is about the groove, the chords, and your solo, your lead melody. Um, and so what I found really interesting here is that we set that up as the foundation, but we build things around it that fit atmospherically. We have the shakers, we have the chimes, we have the shamisen. Um, and so they actually help to widen out and fill out the atmospheric element of the song in a way that jazz typically doesn't. And I found this to be a really interesting decision. It feels natural 
uh, to want to fill in those spaces if you're used to if you're used to writing contemporary music because a lot of pop um, singer songwriter even rock and metal are getting to a point now where they f feel the need to fill out what's around their band uh, with you know strings and synthesizers are getting really big in more mainstream music today um, so actually makes that actually makes me question when this came out this was 81 so I gotta kind of uh, change my perspective here but even in 81 uh, you know thinking about pop music at the time I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't born yet. I'm not going to try to sit here and, and lie about knowing what pop music was like in the 80s. Because first of all, it's easily fact-checked. <laughs> but second of all, it's not the person I am. Um, but we have listened to a couple of 80s songs. Popular 80s songs. And uh, I don't really feel that was a major thing at the time there either. Though, again, I have very little... Um, exposure to that so i don't know it could be wrong there but it feels like a very interesting choice that i don't know is necessarily what i'm getting as i don't know that was necessarily dictated by anything that was happening in any pop culture um which in the 80s we would have had separated cultures as well uh, it's more homogenized now with the internet there's still you know unique elements to geographic areas but the internet has really helped to modify is that a word homogenize uh pop culture in general but yeah so like it, it makes me wonder if this uh john neptune does this often if they play jazz often even i mean there's a strong knack here for writing jazz i'm going to assume the rest of this album has jazz ideas in it but I mean, the decision to include Japanese folk instruments and thus Japanese folk music, which runs at odds with jazz. Interesting choice. The idea to write jazz and then put uh, atmospheric stuff in there. Interesting choice. All these things tell me something uh, about, I'm going to assume, John Neptune as a composer and uh, their ability to be forward-thinking in ways that I would never try to do and I've never heard done before. We've heard Japanese funk bands. Uh, I think Bradio was uh, the name of that one. And it's Japanese people playing jazz music. Well, funk, technically, but... Um, and so, but, but there's so little Japanese influence in there. Uh, traditional Japanese influence and it's just because again there's such a huge divide so I mean this just feels very inspired I think is what I'm getting at it's a daring move that I think paid off and uh, works very well is there anything else I wanted to mention uh, I really like the guitar solo uh, had a little bit of bite to it tons of groove a lot of syncopation uh, just a general nice flow overall, and we had that shift in the middle of the solo when we moved from the driving funk to sort of the laid-back groove, uh, and the, the solo just melded along with that whole transition, felt really great. Uh, I suppose I should bring up the end. I don't know what to make of the end. We have uh, the Shakuhachi in three parts delayed by what two beats and we get it in the center two beats later in the right two beats later in the left it's a beautiful segment but it feels disjointed even from our Japanese folk sections because it eschews everything else in the band and aims to do its own thing where even the melody feels divorced from other melodic concepts we've explored it's an odd decision, but once again, one that informs me of the composer's um, willingness to work outside the box and explore ideas that make sense to them, even if it doesn't make sense to me. It almost feels like it should be 
another song entirely, but given that it was only 40 seconds, maybe it didn't feel like it was appropriate to make it its own track, so it ended up being at the end of Ninja instead. But, yeah, I don't know. It's It it feels very out of place. And let me know if, if you have a completely different read on that. Maybe you find some ties to earlier ideas. You're like, no, actually, it you know, calls back to this. And I just missed it. I don't know. Uh, but it came, for me, my experience with this, it came out of left field. And I don't know. But like I said, it's beautiful. It's a lovely section. Um, and honestly, here's the other thing, too. It's a canon. I don't know why that didn't dawn on me earlier. Um, I'm curious about the canon. You know what? I'm going to take a second uh, to pause the video. I'm going to look this up real quick. Uh, then I'm going to see if I can find the instrumentation, the personnel list. Uh, we'll come back and wrap this video up. Alright, so a couple of things before we wrap this up. I was talking about how the ending is a canon. I wanted to check out specifically if uh, the canon was used in other cultures. And as far as I can tell, it is mostly a Western uh, musical concept. Uh, for those <clears throat> who don't know what a canon is, I've explained this before without pictures. And I'm sure it's super confusing. So I found a good picture on Wikipedia for this. And it's basically when... Uh, you play the same thing a second time, just a little bit delayed. And as you can see here at the very start on the top line, they start at the beginning. The second line starts on the third note for the first line. And the third one starts on the fourth note of the first line or the second note. So every two notes, another voice will come in. And that's exactly what was happening um, with our with our flute solo there at the end. So then that even comes full circle in that they used a Western concept, the canon, to write um, a song that feels, based on the note usage and the instrument usage, like uh, Japanese folk music. Very interesting way to wrap that up, especially given that a majority of the track is jazz. <laughs> Uh, which also, which, oh, so we have Eastern influence and Western influence, which is the uh, Japanese folk and jazz, which don't really work together. And then we wrap the song up finding a Western influence that does work with the Eastern influence and putting the canon on top of uh, the Shakuhachi uh, solo. Interesting. I don't know if that's specifically what they were going for on that, but that's uh, that's what I that's what I picked up there. Now, I did find an instrument list. There is a taiko in there. Uh, there is also a shakuhatsu, but there is not a shamisen. Um, I had misheard that, and instead it was actually a koto, um, which is this thing, and it's, I believe it's kind of like a harp, where the strings are tuned spe to specific notes, and you just pluck them. You don't need to uh, adjust tension or anything on them um, or anything like that. There is also credited a show on the album as well. I don't know what this sounds like, so I don't know if it was in this song in particular. But um, the round piece and the bottom right corner, you blow into it and the air goes out all of the, uh, the bamboo shoots. And I have to do a little bit more research to see if you can adjust it or not. The Wikipedia page appears to show that it just has its one sound. And it doesn't really seem that there's holes or valves or anything to cover to change the pitch. But uh, like I said, I'm going to have to do a little bit more research into that. And probably find a YouTube video so I can hear it. Because <laughs> I have never heard of that one before. So that's cool. Expanded my knowledge quite a bit today uh, on a couple of areas. All right, those are my thoughts on what <laughs> I got to get back to the page with the stuff on it. John Kaizen Neptune's Ninja. What did you think of this track? Was there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I stated? Correct me on. Give me your own perspective on. I lost my balance there. <laughs> Put all that stuff down in the comment section above that in the description box if you could 
head into the Linktree link, takes you to this menu. You can find my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. All right, we also have a special selection and creator request lined up for today. Otherwise, we got an album review tomorrow and uh, the Patreon live stream Sunday morning. Hopefully I can get that out to everybody for public viewing on Sunday night. All right, until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.